this is uh, Warpainter Brian back here once again and I'm going to be continuing to work on this Blood Angels Captain doing a very very simple tabletop quality paint job that my intention is everyone can achieve without having to spend a lot of time practicing. I want everyone who sees this to be able to go I think I can do that and to discover that they really can. As I said before, you saw me last time doing the uh, green highlight, which is going to be the overall base color down on this guy, finishing that up, or doing that last time you saw me. and. As I said, I got most of it done off screen. I'm just touching up some places right now that sometimes when you do stuff like this, you'll do a step and it will look good when you're done. And when you come back later, you'll see bits that you look like and you look at it and you're like, Ugh, I need to go over that a little bit more. So it's been a few days or more. <laughs> And there's just some places that need a little bit of touching up. Which is fine. Uh, the actual bits of touching up is entirely up to you if you want to. Uh, majority of the time people are not going to notice. Especially unless they're holding it up real close anyways. So as I said, it's up to you if you want to go this deep into the touch ups. Or if you just want to call it a day. It's your model, and your model gets however much effort you want to put into it, into it. As always, with my live streams, uh, this is probably going to end up on YouTube later. Otherwise, I'd be playing music or watching something while doing this. And if you hear me talking and having a conversation, it's not because I've gone insane quite yet. It's because there are people in my uh, channel that are talking to me. But as I said, I did all that painting off, off stream. You can see it's all done. All of that mutation green layer. Anyways, the next thing we gotta decide we wanna do is honestly it's probably a good time to do a wash I have all over here almost all the paints I'm gonna use and finish this almost uh, there's a few things I have yet to grab like for instance Um, I don't have the parts to do this top piece, which is probably going to be gold. Or the ropes around his body, but other than that, I have most every other paint ready to go. Uh, for our next step, I am going to put a wash on his face. Remember, we took tan to this. And I am just going to use straight... Rakeland Flesh Shade. This is going to be straight out of the pot. Because uh, Vallejo Came Teller Tan does do a very good job at being a base flesh color. But it's not... It's not the deepest flesh color. In fact, I know a lot of people think... Uh, I know they try to make the equivalent to um, the old dark flesh shade, the dark flesh shade that Citadel used to do. The flesh wash. I don't even remember what the uh, last version of it was called before it became this one. But, uh. Oh, no, I'm not even supposed to. Be, I'm not sure what I'm meant to be talking about. I have my apologies. 
what I was trying to talk about wasn't this discolor. It was um, the last Citadel uh, like base flesh color. Uh, I, I, I think what is now Bugman's Glow was supposed to be the equivalent to um, Dark Flesh Tone. There we go. That's, it. That's the only part that needs the shade. So it's supposed to be the equivalent to uh, the like Dark Flesh Tone color. And there's a dark flesh tone color in here too, but um, no, it's way, way too dark. Honestly, if you want like a game color equivalent to Bugman's Glow, tan is very, very close to Bugman's Glow. And that's without trying. This was an expansion color. I, I'm pretty sure this was an expansion color they added to uh, the game color line. Just one second, my feet are freezing and I have a little heater down here. Ah. Okay. Got that running. Ooh, it's up and down for a while. You can smell uh, I can smell it. Uh, in the meantime, move on to another step. And in this step, I'm going to do some touching up on the cloth. As you can see, I did a wash on the cloth, but the cloth didn't come out perfect. But that's fine. Didn't need to be perfect. Pull out just a little bit of our base color, Xandri Dust. And to that, I'm just going to add some medium. I think with medium those that you usually have a few choices. In this case, you can use matte medium or you can use thinner medium or glaze medium. They all do the same perp they all kind of serve the same purpose. The reason why you want to do medium is you really, really, really don't want to change the properties too much. What I'm doing. So we're just touching it up. We want to keep that color in there. I can't find my matte medium. Okay, well, I'm going to go with thinner medium. Because this shouldn't... A couple drops of that. Shouldn't affect the overall ability for this to cover. Well, I mean, it, we want to affect the ability for it to cover. You want it to be semi-transparent. But, um... Thinner or the uh, glaze medium does have a retarder property to it, and we don't want the retarder property of it because we don't have any reason to wait for this to dry too long. So, I'll pull this up. And I'll show you that. As you can see, it's just. Actually, you can use a smaller brush than this. Something with a little more point. It's like, I don't know, you can see that on my palette. It's really, really thin. I 
right here. Didn't need to be. Quite so brown. You want to do this everywhere where you want the base color to be a little bit more intense. So it looks like it's got a bit more of a water stain look to it. Very just not happy with the overall appearance of the wash in that section. Take this. You might have to do a couple layers, but that's okay because you get a better transition the more of these really thin layers you have to do. Now, of course, you could always take the option to come back in with the base color unthinned as well. It doesn't have to be thinned to do this. By thinning it, all I'm doing is making the transition smoother. And just concentrate mostly on the areas that didn't get the exact color you wanted. And just work it up. Work up the transition color from the shadows. So don't have to worry about being too precise or too neat. We will be coming back very shortly and highlighting all this cloth anyways. The back side here a little bit. Even though this is going to be more hidden on the front side. Still a good idea. Just to help yourself a little bit. Bring that base color back up. The closer it is to the base, the less discrepancy you're going to have between this color and the highlight color, and the less discrepancy you have there. The better that the highlight's going to look. Okay. There's also here, but this doesn't need it. This turned out pretty well on its own. Okay. Uh, I think in the next part, I'm going to do a couple more base coats on this thing. And we are going to start off with a red base coat and all the red parts. requires me to pull out my Mephiston Red. Mephiston Red is just the color I'm choosing to use. For base coats, it doesn't have to be the color you use. You just want a strong red color. You just want a strong red color that You can cover with one or two coats. That isn't too bright on the spectrum, but this is a very rich red, and that's why I like it. It's very rich without being too far up on the spectrum. Anyways, and then you want to start going in and finding the areas that are going to be red. Like the casing. Of 
of this chain sword is going to be red. So I thinned it with a little bit of water. You don't have to. Well, I mean, you should thin it with a little bit of water, but you don't have to thin it with as much as I did. As much as I did it because it made it smoother. Main goal here is to cover up all that excess green with this red. Need to be tried to be a little bit neater. Work around these parts that you already painted uh, silver. But we are going to come back and we're going to hit the silver so a lot of these silver areas again for two reasons. One is going to be touch-ups, and the other is going to be re-highlighting because the Nolan oil brought it back down. And I suppose I say a lot of the areas. I don't mean all of them though. For instance, we're probably not going to hit any of the. Uh, Red, uh, the uh, silver tubing areas that we got earlier. Those areas in between the armor panels. Those will probably stay just as they are. This red's also going to become the base color for the top of this purity seal. The actual like wax part. You can do any color for this. Red works very well with the green though. And it helps keep us from having to use too many different colors. This uh, tactical symbol. The symbol on his shoulders for attack squads. going to be hit with Mephistron Red as well. I do apologize if I do get an angle that you can't see very well. You see it's not full coverage. If you can see that real closely. There's not full coverage there. It's partially covered. But that's okay. It's part of the reason why I said we can come back. Hit it more than once. I also want to hit the main body casing of his plasma gun. plasma pistol and looking back there might be parts where you say oh that should have been this color that's okay that's perfectly fine For instance, there's a few parts on this plasma pistol I might fade to myself. Man, I really wish I had painted that silver. That's okay. Usually, they're such small. Usually, if you were running into that, you've usually made it such a small area where when you come back, you can do a really, really quick light silver over that spot. 
to, you know, you'll hit it with your silver, hit it with your Nolan oil, and you're usually just, you're done. You're happy with it, and you'll be like, yay, that was, that was easy. Barely, barely notice I missed it. In fact, unless you're the one painting it, you're not going to even know that you do that later. I said, I apologize if you can't see what I'm doing all the time. Part of the reason for that is simply that I am got to move it around so I can see what I'm doing. Make sure no parts in here that need to be read. Nothing needs to be read. Like that handle part's going to be gold. Uh, there is a part that needs to be read on here. stripe in this cloth that you can see it's green right now. Carefully go over it with red. Part of the painting process is building confidence. If you say you watch yourself, you look at something on the on the what you're working on, and you say, "I don't know if I can do that." Like that stripe, you know, it's like I'm not sure if I can get that stripe without ruining the cloth. Well, there's two ways you can approach it. You can approach it as in, "Hey, I I have to try doing this, otherwise I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it." Let's see in there. Place in there, a little bit underneath there, that needs a little bit of Xandri dust as well. It's kind of green. It's okay though, we'll, just to get a little bit of that base color in there. See how smooth, how much smoother that looks now? Looks nice. I really like that. But you can either try it this way and do it. And just go for it. Because if you fail, you can always touch up your mistakes. And that's fine. But if you succeed, imagine how good you're going to feel. And honestly, when it comes to doing something, especially when it comes to miniature painting, or actually, well, you can buy this anything in life. When it comes to doing something, the greatest failure is not trying. At least when it comes to doing something that's not dangerous. Obviously, it's something that, well, if I do this and fail, someone's going to get hurt. You're going to be like, oh, well, I should probably never have tried that. But when it comes to something that's not dangerous, something that's just either try and you learn... How, learn where you're at or don't try and stay where you are I'd rather try I'd much rather try so if I don't try all I all I can be sure of is that I didn't try So that's why, when it comes to most things, the greatest failure is not trying.
unfortunately for us, not too many of these steps. are going to take too long anymore. I do apologize to anyone who's watching this on YouTube and they're like, oh, man, I wish he sped this up. But I want the live stream. Uh, I dropped frames at some point. I want the live stream. That's another thing. If this thing drops frames, I apologize. I'm rolling at 30 FPS on a not as high resolution as I'd like. It, it's uh, because it's on a laptop that's an okay laptop, not a very good laptop. So I gotta work with what I have. used to be a gaming computer that I'd do this on, but it's like, what's the point of having a gaming computer if it's only at your studio? <laughs> You're not gaming with it. <laughs> uh. And yes, I don't always pay attention, uh, I don't always practice what I preach. If I made a little bit of a mistake, sometimes in the middle, I will stop and fix it and be like, yeah. Yeah, that's what you get, mistake. Though normally it's better to leave little mistakes until the end of whatever you're doing. There are also some areas where you could have base coded them with a color, didn't matter what color, some sort of color. Maybe it was silver, maybe it was blue, maybe it was red. At a certain step. Like, there are going to be little parts in here that maybe I could have base coated in silver or some other color earlier. I was doing mostly that. But I didn't. Because when I came in here and did, like, for instance, this red, it was most likely I was going to mess it up anyways. So, why waste the time? And yes, there really are places like that. I'm not just saying that. There's a little, uh, there's some wires on the side of this that could have gotten done earlier that I didn't do. And little knobs and things. That it's just better to have done it later. And I have. And I'm happy for it. Okay, this looks like it's going to take about three coats. Of this thin down with piston red. You can do it in less. but you'll have a rather thick looking color. It may not go on very smooth. And when you're done, you may not be happy with it. One of the uh, earliest things you have to learn when you're a beginning painter is a patience. And when I started painting miniatures, like 12, 13 years ago now, when I started doing commissions, I already had over 10 years of experience, so it's been quite a while. When I started, though, that was one of the hardest things for me. Is I wanted things to look good now. I didn't want them to look good later. Because if they look good now, I feel accomplished.
And I'd try to I'd try to make up these little plans so we could things will look good faster and most of them did not pan out. Because they were the, they were twelve year olds, or twelve, thirteen year olds little schemes that have really good looking models really quickly, and it, it never worked. Because I was a kid. <laughs> and what kid do you know that had had little plans actually work out? And anyone out there who's a really, really good painter, I applaud you on your efforts. And then you might be looking at me like, hey, you know, that's not top quality stuff. What are you doing? What, what is this? What is this silly stuff you're doing right now? Hey. First of all, it's for benefit of beginners. Trust me, I'm not doing as well as I could be. I'm far better than this. Far, far better than this. Case in point. <laughs> really, I honestly feel that anyone in this community wants to be a part of this community and a, a beneficial part of this community should want to help other people get better at what you do there will always be people out there who want to learn and there will always be people out there who just want to play I know people in all sorts of boats. I know people who, if they paint their own stuff, quite literally put three colors on their model, give them a wash, give them a little dry brush, and put them on the field. And that's fine. If that's what you like. It's fine. There are other people who are like, well, I'm not quite happy with how that looks. Okay. But I don't have the ability or the time or the desire to paint. That's why we hire people. That's why I exist. And then... You could also have people that are like, well, I don't have the time. Eventually, I'd like to learn. I know plenty of people like that, too. I I've I've, I was the other day talking to someone and saying to them, hey, you know, I know you don't have the ability or time right now, but when you get to it, you get the chance. Work at this. Because he showed me some of his stuff he did. I was like, I see you have a lot of fundamentals, I'll read down. Anyways, I'm going to move on to the base coat for the symbol on the side here. Um, now what? Now I'm going to paint that red too. First I'm going to do that. I'm going to make this I'm going to make this sword red too. Red is almost a secondary color. And it's going to be kind of vacant right here on the chest. So I'm going to make this little sword icon in the center here. Red. And I know you're thinking, well, that's, you know, you're saying something, you could always come back to that. I could. But with how this, how this is designed here, the chest cloth, I don't have to worry too much about getting over that with uh, the highlights. I'm not really going to be, I'm not going to be like right up close to it. So it should be okay. By the way, flesh sheets dry. Look, it gives us just a little bit of depth there, which is nice. Really, really nice. Okay, um, forgive me, I got myself lost. Oh yeah, that's right, I was going to base coat, I'm 
probably losing colors again. <laughs> I'm going to base coat the uh, other shoulder. The icon on the other shoulder. It's the only place that has this. He's the only place with this color, though. Jeez. Now, I labored earlier before I started to find this color, and now that I am started, I've lost it again. Talk about this. Oh, there it is. Wolf Gray. I love Wolf Gray. So it's good for highlighting a lot of cool colors. Cool. I say cool, I mean like cold. Blues and greens. I don't need a lot because it's just one area. Just a little bit of water on the brush. Thin it down. Pull up the guy. Sword. We're just gonna do all of it. Some people put make the sword in a different color. No, it's just gonna all be this color. Partly because for beginners that makes this step easier. That means you don't have to be too careful around this edge here. Around the sword. Make sure you try to keep yourself up on top of this raised part. Fill in the shape. Now, the raised part be your guide. You'll come back and you'll pass over it more than once. So just like with every other layer, you should be thinning your paints. And doing multiple coats. Even when you're seeing me use my airbrush, I promise you, airbrush is not the oh I uh, I, I win it's not a shortcut and by any means you might look at it and be like airbrush makes it look easy yeah Airbrush can be a fast way of getting really, really nice looking results, but you still have to know how to achieve them. I did not immediately get an airbrush and get the most amazing looking effects out of them. It took me some time. It took me some time to be able to do things like this. And that's still not as good as some people can get. I've seen people do far better than that. 
and that's, that's why doing this is important. Now, if you want to do base coats really fast, airbrush can be amazing. Because base coat an entire army in a few hours. Where you'd have to take days taking a brush and going, painting. <laughs> but, um, that's just base coating. And I can say, anyone who wants to base coat, that's an invaluable tool. Next, I'm going to hit any gold areas. Or brassy, whatever you want to call them. But to do that, I need to base coat it with a brown. Honestly, most mid-tone browns work. This is the case. I'm pulling out Beastie Brown. Beastie Brown! In this case, I've got Beastie Brown. Beastie Brown. If you want to know why, I'm doing it this way, there's actually a simple explanation. It is because gold, most golds, do not have a very, very, very good, it does not have very good coverage. Because like most anything that's not black, it's very transparent. So we're just gonna base coat this. Undercoat, actually it's just not even base coating, it's undercoating. You're putting down a color on something that's not intended to be the actual color it's an undercoat. Anyways, a lot of golds have a brownish tendency to them. Or, you know, tend to be brown in color. Or at least in appearance. That's why when you do non-metallic metal golds, a lot of the time, it's with browns and yellows. or with layers of browns and yellows. In fact, Beastie Brown actually does a really good job as like, as like a mid-tone uh, metallic metal. Gold or bronze. It's like one way you can do it. So you take. I know I'm going to be discussing non-metallic metal here in a, uh, on a uh, beginner tutorial, but it, it's just all to go towards why BC Brown is a good base color for gold. This is because gold has a brownish tendency to it. 
or a yellowish tendency, and this is kind of like a slightly yellow brown. So, one way you can do an effective non metallic metal gold for anyone curious exploring it. You can start start with like a layer of beastie brown, and then to that, what you do is you do a wa like average earth shade wash. Then we get the uh, dark parts done, the dark recesses. This is going somewhere. <laughs> um, after that, you will go over it. You can either re-highlight the uh, BC Brown base coat, or if you're satisfied with how it looks, moving on to the next step, what you do is you'll take um, like snake bite leather or leather brown, as it's called in the uh, Vallejo range. That will game color leather, leather brown. Highlight it with that. And depending on the hue you want, from there you go either to adding gold yellow or uh, you can go with like um, scrupulous brown. Another option would be to just add little bits of bone white and go up to uh, go up to pure bone white. And so that just depends more or less on the hue of gold you want, and then you do like extreme highlights with white, and you'll end up with a really convincing looking non-metallic metal gold. Anyways, another thing you notice is like you'll see that this brown is not covering this green extremely well. Well, as I said, metallic a lot of metallic paints don't have very good coverage at all. Imagine how that's gonna imagine how that would look just over this green. It looks it would look nasty. Oh, that's the cloth still. My bad. Though this BC Brown probably would make a good, um, I think a good base color for the twine. But that's not the way I'm going to go with the twine. Let's get this symbol here. I've got a stray I've got a stray hair stray bristle on this paintbrush and it's starting to drive me nuts I will get that off camera later. It will not escape me. All right, you know, just look over your models. Make sure there's no other areas that need gold. Like for instance, this eagle head. It's going to be gold. Eagle. The handle's going to be a different color. It's one of those. Uh, one of those things that where you go with a little bit better quality things like this uh, 
this leader, this captain. That you're going to want to pick out separately. By the way, if you're watching this and you're curious about uh, commissions, uh, just so you know, all squad leaders, squad captains, like this guy, when I do like a 10-man squad, will get a uh, slight upgrade on its quality level. So like if you order all your guys at level 2, he'll be closer to level 3 or he'll be a level 3 quality miniature. If we do level 3, he won't be level 4, but he will be like level 3.5. <laughs> he will be better. So, just so you know. Okay. Next, I'm going to pull out my uh, Kerber Crimson. And I am going to take this nice little brush and get some, put it on my palette. Wet it a little, mix it a little bit of water. You just do a little bit of water because it's not going to be, uh, it's not doing a full wash. Anyways, you want to control, you want just a little bit on your paintbrush for this the shade. And what we're doing is we're going to be taking this shade and applying it to a smaller part, to a small area. For instance, on here, right in there. It's not going to be full cover. It's going to be just little areas. I need some shading. If you can be really careful, instead of using this red tone, you want to try it. Also do this with um, melon oil. For those of you who are a little bit more adventurous, but for this level, this is more than enough. To achieve the look we want. And all this is it's a little bit, and I mean a little bit, of additional help. the appearance. Which is why we grabbed only a little bit and thinned it down lightly. I was doing it this way. You don't shift the overall color. You can still get a shade. You can select areas. And for those of you who are new, this is also a very, very good practice for precision painting. So if you're out there and you're worried about... Or not, since this is a thin paint, 
but you're still doing precision painting with it. It's just a little way of getting yourself a little bit more confidence. The part on the chest doesn't need it. <laughs> if you're wondering why I didn't do that, it doesn't need it there. Okay. I want to do a few more base coats, actually, at the moment. Base coating, base coating, base coating. Sometimes not exactly base coating, but... You get the idea. I mentioned Dark Flesh Tone earlier. Well, you're going to get to see it. <laughs> this is Dark Flesh Tone. And honestly, Dark Flesh Tone works, works really well for other stuff too. It doesn't need to be for flesh. You see it though? It's, uh, Little bit darker than Bugman's Glow. Quite a bit darker than Bugman's Glow. That right there, that is dark flesh tone, and that's not not Bugman's Glow. Okay, I'm going to use this to base coat this handle to this sword. Another simple color you could do is just black. Straight up black would not be bad. But if you want to do something a little bit more interesting, you do it this way. And we will be back with a shade later too. So if you're wondering, like, well, that looks kind of bright, don't worry about it. This is just to add a kind of a reddish brown color to the handle, which actually is a good base for leather, if you're curious. So, reddish brown color. Asking yourself, is there any other thing you want to do with the reddish brown color? Well, I want to do the uh, ropes. around his body. And honestly, this is fine because these ropes, the hue is going to be out completely different when we're done. So don't worry about it looking kind of weird and fleshy to begin with. I guarantee you, I promise you 100% that's not going to look like that when we're done. Doing it this color actually just does a couple things. One, it gives us one less step in the um, painting process. Because even though we have to base coat this regardless, at least we're base coating this with another color that we're seeing on the model, so it's keeping the uh, color count down. 